Good evening. My name is Myra Quates, and I will be your moderator for this class session. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation that was given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kimley in the state of Ohio in Springfield, Ohio in the year of 1931. The Dean of Chicago Northside is Dr. John Quates and the president is Dr. Patrick Latortu. In this school, we will be using the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Psalm, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifests in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary, encyclopedia, or even just by Googling it would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Now, Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Now, Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a, a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. Now, we've drawn the cloud all around the edges of the chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, Everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, the self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name that is given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this, these names and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. 
Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh Elohim led the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh Elohim further instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. Now the pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court that goes round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. Now, absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The objectives and aims of the Chicago Northside Zoom class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose, operating through the dispensations and ages. Seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, is to make it known that Yahweh ordained from the beginning that there is no other name given among men whereby man can and must be saved, saving in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal, eternal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is to speak the truth. Today's scripture lesson is Daniel, the third chapter, and that will be read by Dr. May Cohen, and our prayer will be given by Dr. Cheryl Higgins, and we can have our prayer. Um, let us bow our hearts and mind, and um, let us give all praise, honor, and glory to our Savior King, Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, we just want to thank him for all he have done for us and all that he will continue to do for us by giving us um, um, the revelation um, uh, to his uh, gospel that Yahshua is preaching. So uh, we just want to thank him and, you know, we just want to stand fast in, in this great gospel and we ask him to just lead and guide us uh, through our everyday uh, journey while we're down here. And let us all say hallelujah. 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 Okay, the scripture lesson is down to the third chapter. And I'm going to be uh, reading from the online King James Version of the Bible. It'll come up because something's blocking it. Hold on. Okay. Okay. 
well, I can't do this thing out the way. So I'm going to have to try to read it from on here. Uh, three, Daniel, third chapter. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Then a herald cried aloud, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down, who, whosoever falleth not down and worship shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshiped the golden image of Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whosoever falleth not down and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the provinces of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy Elohim, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do ye not serve my Elohim, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, that at that time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if you worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that Elohim that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our Elohim, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy Elohim, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage or visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to buy Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen and their hats and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did we not, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. He answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of Elohim. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high Elohim, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any Elohim except their own Elohim. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language would spake anything amiss against the Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other Elohim that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. That was, what was we reading? <laughs> Daniel, the third chapter. Yeah, thank you. That was Daniel, the third chapter. Thank you very much, Dr. May Cohen, and also uh, Dr. Cheryl Higgins for the prayer. Um, tonight we will have a three speaker format and, uh, there will be a sign that will appear to let you know when you have five minutes left, please acknowledge that you have seen the sign and then there will be a sign, uh, place when your time is complete. Make sure your, uh, videos are blocked and you are muted unless you are, uh, speaking or reading. And if anybody is willing to help uh, read scripture tonight, please uh, do so. And for our first speaker, we'd like to call on Dr. Benjamin Williams. Uh, good evening to everyone. Um, good evening. I'm happy to be here and, uh, you know, to be before the mount, uh, be around the mountain where Yahweh speak, you know, and his presence, because, you know, when you come to class, you in the presence of Yahweh. So that should give you uh, a knowledge that he's always present. The second that the Holy Spirit speak to a vessel. And that's what we come down here for is to receive eternal life. And, and eternal life is predicated on mercy, grace, and faith. And it's not a works that, you know, you can, like the churches do, they get baptized and eat the Lord's Supper. And, and they say, you know, they say, in the name of Jesus, because they he he was baptized, so you know they got baptized and and stuff. But when we come from the out of the world and come into one of these classes, you know that Yahshua fulfilled the law and the prophets in the Old Testament, and he nailed it to the cross, and he ushered in an age of grace, whereby we just learn of him. Well, we just take his yoke and learn of him. And that's all it is because, you know, you can't, you know, there's no works. Uh, give me, I think, Matthew, the 11th chapter. And he and it talks about, um, um, come to me, all ye are heavy, and later I will give you rest. That's Matthew, the 11th chapter, verse 28. Come okay. unto me. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my oh. yoke. Go ahead. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Now, if he said this is easy, Dr. Kennedy came to us with this divine vision and revelation. And he said, you know, a kid, it's so simple that a kid can understand it. So, you know, you know, if if you say one, two, three, A, B, C, you know, it's simple, you know, and just, you know, this thing is it's so simple that like, you know, what the Messiah said, read read that over again. 11 and 28. Come unto me, all that all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now he's gonna give you rest. Now once now see people when at the time they was working uh, under that under Mosaic law. So he said, Come unto me. So I will give you rest. And you know, and we have to come unto him so we can rest in our heart and mind. You see what I'm saying? Because the work has been done. You all you have to do is learn how he accomplished or uh, worked out your salvation. And you know, and it, and it's 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 by the foolishness of preaching. Like you know, since we is around the mountain, like like the children of Israel is around the mountain. You know what I'm saying? We should be silent and let Yahweh speak. You know what I'm saying? Yahweh speaking, take heed to his words. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, he just used us as a vassal, whether he choose to speak to us or not. You know, and if you, if, if like an individual person speaking, but, and Yahweh is not speaking through him, you got to prove what you say, you know, concerning this teaching. And, and you know, but we, but the real thing is, to hear that voice, which is Yahshua the Messiah. And we've been working all our lives about wanting to know who God is and how he operates and stuff. And um, give me that scripture. Um, they that worship Yahweh must worship him in spirit and the truth. Okay, this is John 4 and 24. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, that's a requirement. You see what I'm saying? You must worship him in spirit and in truth. What is the truth? Give me um, that scripture where Yahshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you could find it. Okay, this is John 14 and 6, I believe. John 14 and 6. Yahshua saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay, now, if he be the way, if he be the truth and the life, that's what you do. You basically believe in this truth and you worship him in spirit and truth and you take his yoke and you learn of him, you learn about Yahshua and Messiah and you know, we know who Yahshua and Messiah is, that's Yahweh Elohim um, in the form of Yahshua and the Messiah, so now you learn about Yahshua and the Messiah and Yahweh Elohim when you take the yoke and, and that's, what, that's what the first aim is all about as to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. And that's what the gospel is. We know uh, the gospel is the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua and the Messiah. But at the same time, it, you know, you see Yahshua on this chart. He is the death. He went through a death, the burial, and, and he raised the third day according to the scriptures. Now, Yahshua is the gospel. Yahweh is the gospel. The death, burial, resurrection points out the, the mysteries of Yahweh's purpose when the gospel is preached. And that's what we come down here for. And it's, 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 it's to know the mysteries of Yahweh according to the purpose of Yahweh and the gospel being preached. And once you receive this gospel, like when, like, you know, I, me personally, I grew up in class. But, you know, I didn't really become acquainted, like, or affiliated with it until I was, like, 
maybe 14 or 15. And that's when I've been in class ever since, you know, like I'm, I'm like on my own, just coming to class and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, and, and throughout the years, you know, I kind of see people, you know, you know, stayed in class and, and people came and left and some people died staying in class and, some people switched the doctrine from from the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah to erroneous doctrine, and you know it's just something that you know I'm just thankful that Yahshua would teach me coming to class, and I understand that once you're around this mountain, you're supposed to hear Yahshua speak, and you know, and that's our job. You know, we supposed to tarry here in class. And receive power on high, just like you know he told his uh, disciples to go and and to Jerusalem. I think it was Jerusalem, and he told them to wait there and receive and wait for power on high. So when they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you see what I'm saying? It's something that Yahshua gave to them. They didn't work upon it. They didn't do anything to deserve it or, or all that stuff. So. You know, and like the upper room that they was in, that's like class. That's like class today. You know, we just waiting to receive power from on high. So don't give up on class because, you know, you can be sealed in class. If you leave class, that's like you know, is is that's like a death sentence. You see what I'm saying? You know, Dr. Kennedy, heart like you know, he said if you don't come back to class no more, no more just go to hell and stuff like that. And and we don't, you know, people like, you know, people that came to class and then come back and stuff like that, you know, it's just hard for, you know, but we have to ask for patience and strength and endurance. You see what I'm saying? And, and it's simple, you know, just coming to class. And, you know, when you come to class, you're supposed to just sit down on your seat and and you got to know which one is speaking, whether if it's the Holy Spirit speaking or the person itself is speaking. And once you know the difference between the two, Yahshua is feeding you his word because um, he's he's that bread and he's giving you his bread, his bread, which is his word. And we just eating his word. And that's how we, and, you know, how the spirit formed in us when he preaches his own gospel, prove his own purpose. He's the only one that knows the father and the father knows him. You see what I'm saying? He's, it's telling, he's giving us the witnesses. You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, what's a witness? Like, you know, like Moses, for an example, when he, um, when Yahweh said, I certainly be with you, and he gave him a sign, you know, or a witness that, you know, with the rod in his hand, he told him to cast him on the ground, and it turned into a snake. Now, and Moses fled, and he told Moses to go back and pick the rod up, pick the uh, snake, pick the snake up by the tail, and it turned back to a rod. So, you know, these and these and these are witnesses that people, you know, like like with the land of Egypt, you know, Israel had to take out the lamb and you know and they um had to pierce that lamb in the side and and strike the strike the door and put four points of blood on the door and they had to roast that lamb and eat it. And that lamb had to be in now, so they could go on a three day journey into the wilderness into the wilderness and and you could see the death of burial resurrection in that because you know the lamb itself pointed out to Yahshua and the Messiah, and you know and when he and that literal lamb was pierced inside, you got Yahshua, he was pierced inside. And you got the blood on the door, and you got Yahshua on the side. He got the blood on the cross and his body. Four points of blood. You see what I'm saying? And 
it goes where the children of Israel followed the cloud out and Joshua was in that cloud leading and guiding the children of Israel to come out of Egypt. So you see that, you know, the death the, and burial and when when Joshua was in the tomb, he was buried. And, you know, and Israel went through the waters and uh, the Red Sea and <clears throat> and then and um and they resurrected over into the wilderness and you got Yahshua Messiah resurrected over he, he was raised from the dead and he rose with the body a group of people just like when Israel resurrected over there to, in the wilderness that's like a, a body and a group of people and it's the same correlation and the same principle but you know, if 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 you see these witnesses, that's what it's, it it establishes your faith, and the witnesses make you believe. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you go to court, you know, and you can watch these, you know, things about you know people that you know was did or did they did did the crime or they didn't do the crime, but the evidence, you know, or the witnesses. You know, tell, you know, prove whether they innocent or guilty, and that's what you know establishes a, a, a man's faith. Like, you know, yeah, that person was he didn't do that crime because we got the witness and proof that that person didn't do that, or that person did do that because we got the witness and proof, and that settles the whole thing. So people believe it. You see what I'm saying, and that's just how it is. Just like when Yash will provide this gospel to us you see what i'm saying he give like okay uh give me a scripture it's a faith come by hearing and hearing of the word of yahweh okay this is romans oh you got it go ahead Okay, Romans 10, 7, 17. Uh, you're an echo. I don't know if something going on with my phone, but Romans 10, 10 and 17. Uh, uh, is it, can I start at 16? You can. Okay, Romans 10, 6, 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Yahweh, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of Yahweh. Okay, now, we're here now, now. We're around the mountain, just like the children of Israel is around the mountain. And we're in the upper room, just like the 120 in the upper room. Now, this is something. When the gospel is preached according to the law and the prophets by Yahshua the Messiah, you receive the faith. And that faith, I'm going to tell you something. Like he said, check to see if you be in the faith or not. You know whether you believe in Yahshua the Messiah or not. You know what you believe in from a natural standpoint and from a spiritual standpoint. You know these things. Nobody has to tell you anything about it. But even though when the gospel is preached and you receive the faith, that establishes your faith in Yahshua and the Messiah. How, like, you know, like we say all the time, like, you know, do you, do you see this and do you see that? You know, we all say, yeah, well, I see that. I see, you know, this and I see that. You see what I'm saying? But the biggest thing is, like, do you believe it? You see what I'm saying? Like, like you know, we all see the migration from Egypt to Canaan's land, and we all can go through that, and we all see that. But do you believe that? You see what I'm saying? Do you believe it, that it actually did happen? Do you understand the spiritual significance of it, and do you believe that, too? 
this thing is predicated on faith. And it's it's the witnesses that establish your faith. It's the witnesses that makes you believe the truth. You see what I'm saying? And we just read faith come by hearing. So you got to hear to understand what you under you got to hear the words of Yahshua the Messiah. And and that's what we come down here for is to receive that faith. And if you got that in your heart and mind to receive the faith, you see what I'm saying, and 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 want to be saved, you see what I'm saying. It says, who should he teach knowledge and make understand doctrine? You know, like they say, the founder said, you know, those that want to know. So if you really want to know and want to be saved and all that stuff, Yahshua is, is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only one that can take you by the hand, just like a baby. You see what I'm saying? And keep you. And he's not, you know, he's not a, he's not an Indian giver. Like, you know, if he give you something, then he, you know, he'll take it back and stuff. But but the real thing is, is, is the faith. And you get an understanding and the witnesses you have to look don't like you know i i was i was one day i was just thinking and stuff you know what i'm saying and and a, and, a, and it like it's like a voice came to me uh, he just said don't re don't reject the witnesses and i'm like you know don't reject the witnesses and i understand now because you know if you reject the witnesses, you don't have nothing to stand on. You see what I'm saying? And and it's, it's the witnesses that's very important. You know, it's the witnesses that's going to carry you on to the next age. It's the witnesses of Yahshua the Messiah. And that's the law and the prophets concerning himself. And it's the witnesses that basically that you have in yourself you know like like you know a, like a, this witness is where every mankind it could be for you or against you you got a physical body and it goes according to a tabernacle pattern now that's a witness now if you reject the witnesses you see what i'm saying you rejecting the gospel too so now, since the, to don't reject the witnesses, you see what I'm saying? Because the law of prophets testified to Yahshua the Messiah, and he's the only one that can show you about himself, and he's the only one that can give you the witness concerning his gospel. You see what I'm saying? And uh, let's get First Corinthians fifteen and one. Oh. Is the First Corinthians fifteen and one more of a brethren? I declare unto you. Yes, First Corinthians fifteen and one, out the King James version. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and in wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Oh, go okay. ahead. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, okay, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, it goes back to the witnesses. Your body is a witness. This creation is a witness. The law and the prophets is a witness. And like I said, you know, like that voice told me in the back of my mind, don't reject the witnesses. And believe me, it establishes your faith. And that's the point. If we reject this wit these witnesses, you see what I'm saying? We could get in trouble big time. And that's why, you know, 
It's very important to obey. Like um, Samuel told Saul, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. And if you want to sacrifice this this gospel, you know, you just lost and you you know, you just lost. And it's anybody. And that could be me too. You see what I'm saying? But you know, the witnesses is, is very important. And we surrounded, like Paul said, we were a great trial of witnesses. You see what I'm saying? And everything is a witness, either for you or against you. And even in, in the court of law, you know, and you know, you gotta have a witness, whether you, like witnesses, whether you've been proven innocent or guilty. And you know, and this stuff could be for you or against you, and this is the witnesses. You see what I'm saying? And and this is what establish your faith. And faith come by him. And when you hear Yahshua's voice through a vessel and he's speaking to you, you got to obey. I have to obey. And this is not a plaything either, because you know, this thing is real. And, you know, eternity is a long time on both sides being in glorification or damnation. And I'd rather be in glorification than, you know, than to be fooling around and, and you know, you know, trying, you know, what a lot of stuff, you know. And, and yeah, and, 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 you know, people don't, like a true son of Yahweh go through pure hell you know, with a lot of stuff, you know, if you read about what people went through in the law and the prophets and the apostles and all that, they didn't have a picnic like the world did, like the world is doing now, you know, you know, I lived the best life and, you know, everything else that, you know, but the truth sign, go through it. And, and we all go through it. I'm, we, you know, everybody going through something and, you know, everybody has problems and, you know, and, you know, I just take my problems to Yahshua the Messiah because he's the only one that can solve it. And, you know, and it's like once you experience that peace and stuff like that, then, you know, he puts you in another situation and it's just something that, you know, and you just have to endure. You know, he said the same who endure to the end, the same shall be saved. And, you know, we have to endure, and it's not easy, and you don't want to give up, you know. And, you know, and Paul said, much trials and tribulation enter ye into the, king, uh, uh, enter ye into the kingdom. So, yeah, we all go through stuff, trials and tribulations. Yahshua tests our faith. You know, we get tempted by the adversary. You know, he tells us things like, you know, just negative stuff and, you know, and, you know, it's, it's all type of stuff that the sons really go through. And and if you ain't having these type of problems, you know, you got, you need to be worried about that because, you know, the world ain't having these type of problems either. But, you know, but if you're a true son of Yahweh, you just read about, like I said in the scripture, I said, you know, about the fiery furnace. You see what I'm saying? They went through things back then, too. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, Yahshua was there, and he delivered them out of the fiery furnace. You see what I'm saying? So all these things are, you know, a learning experience for us to realize the ever-presence of Yahshua, the Messiah, in us. And that's the Holy Spirit. And you can't see it, but and you can't feel it, but, you know, you will just know with his ever presence. And, you know, we, I'm just thankful. You see what I'm saying? I really am. And, you know, I'm just, I'm glad to be in class, you know, and, and I, you know, like I said, I grew up in class and my mom would take me to class and stuff like that. And, I didn't know nothing about it. All I knew was that Yahweh and Yahshua and all that. Until, like, I got 14 years old, you know, that's when I became active into my everyday, like, like going to class for the rest, you know, since then. And I'm, I see the bell. 
And, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm 40 years old and I've been in a class like this since then. And, and the thing that always struck me was like, you know, when back then when I started, when Yahweh started to teach me who he was and how he actually exists and stuff, I was fascinated with spirit, pure spirit, shape and form and all that. Two covenants, you know, ages and dispensation, you know, correlations, the tabernacle, and things like, like that. You know, a lot of things I let slip over the years, but, you know, but even then, you know, Yahshua could bring it back to your remembrance. And, you know, and it's just, it's a beautiful thing to show, to know that you are in the presence of Yahweh when you're in class. And he's here, and the Holy Spirit speak through a vessel, and you got to know which one is speaking. You see what I'm saying? Like he told Israel to clean up and gather around the mouth so he could speak. So now we're, we're around the mountain. You see what I'm saying? And, and he's speaking. And just like the people, 120 in the upper room, that's like class too. So don't leave class because you can't receive power, power from on high. And if you do leave class and, you know, you just destined to be lost. And it's just stuff unless Yahshua will have mercy on you on your deathbed or before you this thing in and and we don't wish this on nobody and and you wouldn't want to be there either which is the lake of fire and nobody don't wish the lake of fire on nobody and they don't want to be there and everything else so you know be obedient give yahweh all the praise honor and glory thank him every day because you know every day is another day for the for us to get it straight and we got books, we got transcripts, we got tapes, we got all that stuff. We got a Bible, we got pamphlets, we got SoundCloud. Go back and research these things and see what the founder said about this and wait on the revelation for it. And you, and you stick with that revelation. And then, yeah, like I said, y'all feel not an Indian giver. So, you know, if he shows you something, it's going to be according to himself because he's the only one that knows it and we don't know it but he do and you know and he loves us and, and our job is to have faith in him and and that's our job and and like i said don't reject the witnesses because if you do you just as lost so accept the witnesses and deal with it and stand on it because you're going to need it and it's going to get a lot worse in the world and and you know just cry out you know to Yahshua and the Messiah because you know he hears our cries but the fathers like the Egyptian they cried out too and Yahweh didn't hear that so same principle out there in the world Yahweh ain't hearing their cries but the true sons he hear our cries so I'm just going to go to the floor and I just you know give all praise and honor to Yahweh on him and his son, who is blessed forever and forever about, you know, and 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 he is the king of kings, and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to Yahshua and the Messiah. And it's best to just say, Yahshua, I confess, and I bow now, you know, and stay that way, and just stay humble. And with those three words, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Williams. And for our next speaker, we'd like to call on Dr. Amir Coleman. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Alrighty then. Um, class, it's good to be here uh, and to give a reasonable testimony of the things that Yahshua has shown me. Can somebody go for, can somebody go get um, 
Matthew 24. Start at the first verse. Matthew 24 and 1. And Yahshua went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came with him. And his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Yahshua said unto them, See ye not these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be torn down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him, saying, to him heavily, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and shall deceive many, and shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See not ye be troubled, for all things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes, in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall, shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abode, abode the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Thank you. We were admonished by our founder. Matthew, the 24th chapter, is our theme song all the way to the end. Now, all those things that Yahshua told what was going to occur was at the end of the anti-Diluvian age. I'm sorry, the post-Diluvian age, the age after the flood. At the end of that age and the end of the 4,000 year. And he's telling his his disciples, these things which we are witnessing to this day. Now, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. I want you to get for me 2 Peter 3.10 and um, old Romans 3 and 4. And then after that, I give 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, I want to focus and I want to touch on the gospel, the true gospel of the king. Go ahead and read. Okay, this is 2 Peter 3 and 10. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night. Now, the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night. Read on. In the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. Now the heaven shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Now the elements, now they shall melt with fervent heat. 
Read. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Now look, the creation came in by fire. It has to go out by fire. Read on. Is that all to it? Uh, 11 first. Seeing then that all those, these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and holiness? Now, seeing these things, what manner you should, you should be. So now we just read that the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Well, now here we're reading what the end is going to, uh, um, how the end is going to occur. And it's going to occur, I want you to get for me real quick, um, First Corinthians 15 and go to 52. Just jump over there real quick. This is First Corinthians 15 and 52. King James Version. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Now look, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all nations. You see, for a witness unto all nations, then the end shall come. We read how that's going to be. Now this is how subtle, or this is how quick it's going to be. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, read. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this... So, thank you. So, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, so we don't have a whole lot of time of getting ready, we should be as the children of Israel in the wilderness, I'm sorry, in the land of Egypt, during the night of the Passover. We should be ready as they were, with their shoes on their feet. You see, staff in their hand, their loins girded, and they're eating in haste because it was what? Yahweh's Passover. That's 12 and 11 of Exodus. So now, we know the true gospel has not been preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, because the end would have, have already came in the souls of men throughout the creation and to this time either will be in glorification internally or damnation eternally. So thus that has not come to pass. We know that the gospel, the true gospel has not been preached in all the world for a witness. Now Romans three and four says what? If you have that. This is Roman three and four. Mm -hmm. Yahweh forbid, yea, let Elohim be true and every man a liar. So now as Yahshua, oh, finish that, I'm sorry. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and thou mightest overcome when thou art judged. Thank you. So now Yahweh be true. And every man a liar. Now, Yahshua, we know that it's impossible for him to lie. And if he said that the end will come, that it will melt with fervent heat, we know that to be true. Just as the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the days of what? The son of man. And he described in how those days and, um, um, and how they were going to be like. That's, uh, that's Matthew 24. Uh, 20, 36. But I'm, I want to focus in on the gospel. Now, the gospel, which means good news or glass tithings, it is the salvation of our souls through the preaching of the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah, according to the scriptures. So I would like to take the time to break a little bit of that down. Go ahead and get 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 
1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4, King James Version. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. Paul writing to the brethren, which are in Corinth. Now he's preached it unto them. Read. Which also ye have received. Now look, it's been received. Read on. And wherein ye stand. And wherein ye stand. Read. By which also ye are saved. Now you're saved. Read if ye keep in memory what I have. Look, seen, but I... That's a big if. I didn't mean to cut you. That's a big if. If you keep in memory. Read. What I preached unto you. Mm -hmm. Unless ye have believed in vain. Now we don't want that. All right. That's that's not gonna do us no good. Read. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I have which I also received. Right. Pass, that, look, look, passing the meal, delivering what he also received. All right, read. How that the Messiah died for our sins according so to the scriptures. Now, here it is, is what Paul received. The self-same thing which the law and the prophets talk or prophesy or uh, talk about. The same self-same thing that Yahshua, the Messiah, during the days of his flesh, preached when he was walking in the earth plane. All right, read. And then, How that wait, wait. Read that part again. I just cut you off. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You want me to start from the first one? Well, I delivered yeah. unto you. First of all, that which I also received, how that the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures. So now how he did it, according to the scriptures, read. And that he was buried. And, and that, that he was buried, read. And then he rose again. He rose again the third the day. The third day, mm -hmm. according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Now. Go over, get John 5, 39. Messiah referenced the same scriptures Paul is referencing right now. Now the scriptures, we're gonna get that real quick, but I would like to, I would like to say something. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not the scriptures that Paul and that we're about to read about Yahshua were referring to. Read on. This is John 539. Search, search the scriptures. Now, Paul, the... now, Yahshua is talking to the disciples. I mean, I'm sorry, correction. He's talking to the scribes and Pharisees. Now he's telling them, search the scriptures. Ye search the scriptures, read. For in them you think you have eternal life. Now you think you have eternal life, read. And they are they which testify of me. Now he's saying the scriptures in which they look up or search into of their own glory or their own satisfaction, you see, or eternal life, they're talking about Yahshua. All right. Now, now that I grabbed that, I want you to know that this Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was not during the time of the days of the Messiah. He had not told them anything. Uh, to write down while he was in his ministry. In fact, what he said was, get over John 14 and 26. You want to get it out the book. This is John 14 and 26. Thank you. We want to know what the, we, we want to know what's in the book. We want to know what the Messiah said. Okay, read. But the comforter, now, look, he says, but the comforter. Who is the Holy Spirit. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? We just read in Matthew 24 chapter about the things that were to occur at the end of that age, which we know is being repeated and manifested at the end of this age. Now, he says the comforter. Now, if you would have read further in Matthew 24, you would have read about the days of Noah. So shall be as the days of coming of man. Well, now at the end of the antediluvian age, which means before the flood, 
You had Noah, a man sent to warn what? The wicked, right? Of the flood. So now Noah at the end of that age was preaching of the flood to come in the building of the ark and the saving of the soul. Now his name, need, his name means comfort. So now you have Yahshua the Messiah here at the end of the post-Diluvian age. And he's telling the disciples, but the comforter, read. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Father, Yahweh, will send in my name, Yahshua, he comes in his Father's name. We would have picked that up further on in John 5.39. So now the son's name is Yahshua, which means Yahweh, Shua, salvation. Mm -hmm. So now he says in his father's name, or he's coming in his father's name, read. He shall teach you all things. Now, look, he shall teach you all things. Now he's talking to the disciples while yet in the body, read. And bring all things to your remembrance. Look, so he said he will teach you and he will bring it back unto your remembrance. Now, all through Yahshua's ministry, he was speaking unto them plainly and speaking unto the people in parables. And them, I mean the disciples plainly. Them, I mean the people or the other Jews in parables. Now, they didn't understand what he was doing. You see, and we, we can get that when Yahshua washes the disciples' feet and he washes Peter's feet. And Peter said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't wash my feet, Yahshua. Let's see. But what did Yahshua tell him? What, what did Yahshua say to him? I want you to get that. Just to prove they didn't know what he was doing while he was in the flesh. So he didn't have them to write anything down. But Yahshua was going according to his purpose. And there was a point in time in which his spirit will be placed in them, which he will recall everything he taught and he show, and, and showed them, showed them and what they witnessed and bring it all back to their remembrance, as he said. Now go over here and get real quick. But he says, you don't know what I'm doing now. Read. Okay, this is John 3, uh, 13. And... Uh, uh, five. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Master, dost thou wash my feet? Yahshua answered and said unto him, What I do, thou knowest not now. Look, what I do, thou knowest not now. Free. But thou shalt know hereafter. Now you will know hereafter. What's hereafter? After what Paul preached oh, to the uh, brethren in Corinthians. The death, the burial, the resurrection, and then the ascension of Yahshua the Messiah with him pouring out his Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and to, to the 120 in the upper room. That's the hereafter. Read on. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Yahshua answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Master, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. All right, thank you. I, 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 want, I just wanted to grab that. Um, so I want you to go ahead and get from me Isaiah 8 and 20. I hope you didn't lose me and where I was going. Yahshua the Messiah was not talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John speaking to the scribes and Pharisees, nor was Paul. He was referring to the law and the prophets, which we're about to read. So what he had, I mean, what he spoke is what they had at that time. All right. Now we go ahead and get Isaiah 8 and 20. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. King James Version, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, the scripture is the first 
uh, is the law and the prophets. Now, the law is the first five books of your Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The prophets is Joshua from Malachi, the 34, next 34 books. Together, they are the scriptures, or what you call the Old Testament. They make up the volume. All right, now, Yashin Messiah said, I've come, I've, um, um, what did he say? Uh, Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O Yahweh. So now he came to fulfill, and I, we, we even get to there yet, but I wanted you to get Isaiah 8 and 20 to know that the law and the prophets is the scriptures which the Messiah was referring to. That's what they had. They had the Torah or the Pentateuch, the Mosaic law. So now we got that. I want you to get Revelation 11 and 3. The reason why the law and the prophets are important because they are his two witnesses, which foretell and relate of his birth, life, death, burial, and resurrection of, Yah of, of him, Yahshua the Messiah. And what we say is that the law and the prophets is his ID to identify him. It is his story. All right, read on. The Revelation 11 and two, but the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall tread underfoot 40 and two months. And I continue. I'm sorry, Revelation. Um... Um, what was that you got? It's 11, 11, and three. 11, 11 and 2, 11 and 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Thank you. I, he said, I will give power unto my two witnesses. Go over real quick and get the vision chart. Now on this, um, do you got do you do you have it up? I'm seeing black. Hello. Chart that you want up? I wanted the vision, the A Asher A chart. I'm sorry. Thank you. Now on the Ea Asher Ea chart, on the side of revelation or righteousness, you have down on the, by the legs or the legs of the, uh, uh, which is showing the embodiment of the unity, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And you have by, by his legs, witnesses. And next to each leg, you have law and you have prophets. And it is those witnesses, um, Go ahead and get for me where we are compassed about with such a great a cloud of witnesses. I don't know exactly where that is, but these witnesses is what builds up our faith. We're not going blindly now. You see, we know that eternal life is to know John 17 and three. So now it's through the knowledge of the law and the prophets that Yahshua shows you how it was talking about him. He reveals it to you because he's the teacher. He teaches and shows you how the law and the prophets testify of him. And absolutely no one can not preach the true gospel of the kingdom without showing how his death, how his burial, how his resurrection was foretold in the scriptures. And we can pick that up real quick in Luke 24, 25 to 27, and 44 to 45.
Okay, this is Hebrews 12 and 1. Okay, Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Thank you. Thank you. So I wanted to get the great clouds of witnesses. Now, Yahshua, the Messiah. No, we'll go ahead and get the next scripture, and then I'll move on. On the Luke 24, where did you want me to start? You go ahead, get Luke 24, start at 25 to 27, okay. and 44 to 45. And then I want to show how that Yahshua, the Messiah himself, was preaching the gospel of the kingdom, which we got, which is the death, burial, resurrection, according to the scriptures. So I want you to hold for me Matthew 9 and 35. Um, get from me Matthew uh, 16 and 21, because we are not preaching nothing different than what the Messiah is preaching. We are sticking in the book. We're going according to the law and the prophets and showing how Yahshua Messiah fulfilled it. And we show these things because we're a school. We teach and show how the Messiah fulfilled these things or finished what he authored or instituted. All right. Go ahead. This is Luke 24, 24. Yes. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it, even so as the woman had had said, but him they saw not. Now then, this is after, excuse me, this is after his resurrection. All right, they don't see him. That physical body there is consumed. He's fulfilling. How and what is he fulfilling? The lamb back there in Egypt. Just gonna touch on it real quick. In 12th chapter of Exodus, that lamb had to be consumed, what the children of Israel were required to eat as a necessitation for their deliverance. And that lamb had to be consumed by the morning. Following that tabernacle pattern, which we read about later in Exodus, the 25th chapter, which Yahweh had Moses to make out there, which we show, which was shown to him in the mount, an intangible spiritual one, had him to create the physical. And in that tabernacle, in the court roundabout, you have that altar. That's the first vessel you go to when you go through that gate. Something had to die or something had to be consumed. So Yahshua the Messiah, what I'm telling you is he's following according to how he set it up, how he authored it by this pattern, which I didn't have much time to go through. But that pattern, our moderator touched on it. All right, he is the pattern and he's going according to it. So now go ahead and finish where you are. Okay, uh, 25th uh, verse. Right, the body, so just to bring you back, the body's gone. They don't see no physical body. It's consumed. All right, read. Okay, but they saw him not. Then he said unto them, O oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe. Now look, they, they, they did not recognize. He says, oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe. Read. All that the prophets have spoken. Look, all that the prophets have spoken. Spoken of of whom? He said it, of him. Read. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things? Now look. And Read. And enter into his glory. Now look, are not I die, you see, bury or resurrect? Read on. And beginning in Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So now remember, 
always begin at Moses. Keep the foundation the same. Leave it alone. Got to begin at Moses because that was the, that was the setup back there in the law. Moses being the first man to know the name of the creator. Look, Yahweh set up his own purpose. He got it under control. He knows what he's doing. So you begin at Moses. You go back where? To the law. I see the five minute sign. All right. Read on. Dropping the 44. Mm-hmm. And he said unto them, these are the th- these are the words which I spake unto you while mm-hmm. I was yet with you. Right. That all things must be fulfilled. Now look, all things must be fulfilled. Now we're getting into what the mission of Yahshua is. And this is pertaining to the gospel. Now he's talking about fulfilling. That's what he came to do. He came to fulfill. It was prophesied of the, oh man, it's a lot, it's so much. (laughs) Prophesied in the prophets about the Messiah to come, how he was going to come in, what he was going to suffer, what he was going to undergo. You see, you had Yahoshua back there. And you find out, with Moses. Moses wrote of him. He was back then. Yahshua the Messiah. Yahoshua the son of Nun, which is Yahweh will be salvation. Now he's manifesting as the Yahshua Messiah. Yahweh is salvation. So now everything is concerning him. Everything is, he's the pinnacle of the purpose of Yahweh. All those witnesses and principles was leading up to that one, Yahshua the Messiah. So now he says, read on, continue where you are. Uh, uh, that all things must be fulfilled. Which must be. Written, uh-huh, which was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So it was written. This is why you have to go to the law and the prophets. If you don't, there is no Holy Spirit or no understanding in you. And we can see that. Because we've been given eyes to see and ears to hear. Yahshua in us discerns and let us know who is speaking. And if they truly understand what is what they're saying. So ain't no fooling. So now look, I have to cut it up because of time. So you have different references. In Matthew 9, 35, he was going about preaching the gospel. He was healing the sick and he was healing diseases. He preached. Um how he must undergo and suffer things in Jerusalem and things about the scribes and the priests. He said to Matt, uh, John and uh, uh, John the Baptist, how he must um, suffer to be so now for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. He said it the second time off the Mount, the Beatitudes, how that he uh, uh, came to fulfill, not to destroy. And then we just read the third time. So now we identify those death, burial, resurrection principles. You also have, get for me real quick, um, wing from the milk and drawn from the breast. Uh, that's it what, where is that? Something? Uh, maybe Proverbs? I don't uh, Isaiah 28, 9. 28, okay. Yes. This is Isaiah 28 and 28 and 9. Whom mm-hmm. shall he teach knowledge? Now, look, whom shall he teach knowledge? Now, we didn't get uh, what we call our other things, so um, Isaiah 8 and 20, because you cannot also preach the purpose of Yahweh without going, you see, showing uh, Romans 1 19 and 20, because it takes the natural to what? Understand the spiritual. So now that which may be known of Yahweh, that's what I wanted to give. He said that which may be known, Paul. Now we're reading over here, whom he shall teach. Now my time is up. Where it talks about um, they that are winged from the milk and drawn from the breasts. The law and the prophets is like those breasts. It gives milk. It gives sustenance unto the babe so we can what? Grow and nourish in him. So I hope you got something out of that. It was just a lovely refresher. Um, if this is your first time, please come back and listen and join us again. We have more to share. Hallelujah, brother.
Thank you very much, Dr. Coleman. And for our uh, last speaker, we'd like to call on Dr. Patrick Latorton. Okay, I would like to yield the floor at this time. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Dr. Casey Jones. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. I'm uh, just grateful to be in class. You know, I enjoyed the uh, comments from all the previous vessels. And yeah, I am uh, just grateful to really have um, any uh, testimony, any to say of. Um, Yahweh Elohim and his son Yahshua the Messiah. Um, you know, it's uh, this is a school, and um, it's a result of a divine vision, and it was given to the founder, Dr. Kenley. And um, you know, he 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 spoke about a lot of different things, uh, admonishing us in the school to do research and investigate. And that's what I've had to do through the years that I've grown in this school. But the reality is that Yahshua the Messiah must introduce himself to you and your own personal life. Um, you know, and and that comes with trials and tribulations, as was said before, you know, it's just, uh, maybe uh, I can have a, a, a Ephesians where it speaks about grace. And that's, that's the only way that we are saved and each and every day. Um, I try to give thanks to Yahshua um, because it's really him. It's his grace and mercy that really allows for me to get up in the morning and do anything. And um, coming to the school, you know, it's him who's teaching and Yahweh is spirit. and we have these nine divine attributes. He's depicted on his chart as a cloud, but um, you know, he's he's in all things. He's the source and substance of all things. And then that shape um in that cloud, you have nine divine attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, beauty, love, justice foundation, power, and strength. And those nine divine attributes, they're displayed throughout the scriptures and uh, the prophets. Um, you know, Solomon displayed wisdom. Um, and Noah's name means comforter. And those nine attributes took on a set shape and form as Elohim. And it was uh, shown to Moses in the top of Mount Sinai. And, you know, he took on a set shape and form. Maybe we can have, um, well, you know, this is all, it's all predicated on this promise made to Abraham that in his seed, he would bless all families of the earth, both Jew and Gentile. Maybe we should have, I don't want to quote that. Maybe I can have uh, Genesis uh, 15 and I should be 12 around, around there, but. You know, it really is uh, 
I call for a couple things. I just don't want to go all helter skelter, you know, all over the place. Um, but you know, here's the thing. Hold hold off on that. Um, see, as I said, this this cloud covers the whole chart, and you know. We have our being, we we have our, we live, we breathe and have our being within Yahshua the Messiah. And maybe we can have uh, Acts 17 and 28 first. Okay, this is Acts uh, 17 and... 28, okay, excuse me, Acts 17 and 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, we are also his offspring. That's right, continue on. 29th verse. For as much then as we are the offspring of Yahweh, we ought not to think that the supernal nature is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance Yahweh winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent because he hath appointed a day in which he would judge the, will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he raised him from the dead. Continue. And that, that's right. Um, and you know, that's, that's a, a beautiful thing, you know, because I'll speak for myself. I know I, I can't have eternal life any other way than through Yahshua the Messiah. Um, it's just, it's, it's just no way around it. Um, actually, the scriptures, the scriptures, uh, will prove that. And I'm thinking of Acts 4, 10 through 12. Maybe we can have that read. You know, because there's a lot of there, there's a lot of uh, chaos going on in the world. You know, and as the previous speakers was referring to learning the Yahshua and taking up his yoke and allowing him to teach you because he is the comforter and he's going to give you peace. And that's the only peace that I can find. You know, that's why I come down here to class. Um, it's a rest and uh, rest from all of those car for carnal minded thinking from the ways of the world, you know, um, and I love to hear Yahshua speak, you know, because it's reassuring to me. But um, I call for some things. Uh, you you can grab any of those if you have them. Uh, this is Acts 4, 10 through 12 out of King James Version. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Yahshua the Messiah of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom Yahweh raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you. And thank this you is the that. stone. I'll continue. This is the stone which was set at night of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men 
whereby we must be saved. That's right. Um, and you know, that's it's just a comforting thing to know that. Um, and you know, also, can we have uh, John 1, 1 through 3, and then you could drop down to 14. Um, because, you know, the, the unity of the spirit is it, just a, a, it's a, it's just a beautiful thing. This te whole teaching is beautiful. And yeah, I was showing the principles throughout, throughout the scriptures, um, throughout the ages and dispensations, you know, uh, opening and closing the ages out and you know um but we're his offspring we we when we had this tabernacle pattern which was showed to moses and it was threefold it was a most holy place holy place and a court roundabout in three compartments one tabernacle pattern and there was steps within this tabernacle pattern. The first step was the gate. And the second step was the altar of sin sacrifice, where it had four major points of blood on the horns. And it testifies to Yahshua the Messiah. Because when he came on the earth plane, they put nails in his hands and a crown of thorns on his head and nails in his feet on the cross. And he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. And it's likened unto the, that labor. That third step is the brazen labor. The fourth step is the door. The fifth step is the holy place where you have angels on the curtains. And in this holy place, you have a seven branch golden candlestick, which, which kept light throughout this tabernacle. And you had 12 loaves of shoe bread, which the high priest ate off of daily for sustenance. And you had that altar of incense, which only the high priest knew the ingredients thereof to make it. And you had the sixth step, which is the second veil or the veil of the flesh. And the seventh step, you had the most holy place with the Ark of the Covenant, the two archangels overshadowing the mercy seat. And they were looking in the, into the cloud where the invisible presence of Yahweh dwelled. And the Ark of the Covenant, you had the law, Aaron's pot, that Aaron's rod that budded in a pot of hidden, hidden manna. And, you know, there was steps throughout this tabernacle. And Yahshua, when he came on the earth plane, maybe we, we could have Matthew 5 and 17, right? Because he said he, he came to fulfill. So, um, you know, he had to go through that death and be buried in Joseph's new tomb. And he had to resurrect the third day. And when that, when this high priest in his tabernacle, after he killed the sacrifice and washed himself and anointed himself with oil, then he was allowed to officiate in the holy place. And he he would pour oil throughout that seven branch golden candlestick, and he would start. He would pour it into the uh, fourth branch, and the rest of the oil would go throughout the candlestick. And it really testifies to Yahshua the Messiah, you know, because he he came. He comes in the 4,000th year, you understand? And 
See, you got 12 loaves of shoe bread, and it represents the 12 tribes of Israel. And also, it represents communication because you have an altar of incense right there. And the altar of incense represents Yahshua, the Messiah. So you have daily communication with him. And uh, see that. Now, the high priest is the only, well, then, now, that altar incense also represents Yahshua being the only mediator between Yahweh and man on the earth plane. So, and it also, yeah, it just, re it represents Yahshua, you know. Uh, the seventh step is the most holy place and you know maybe we can have uh i want to say i want to say matthew 27 51 through 52 but i don't want to lose track of what i'm saying uh you know because when yashua's was on a cross it said the veil of the temple was torn torn in twain from top to bottom you understand and see if that second veil is the sixth step or the veil of the flesh and he see he took off his flesh and it ascended into heaven you understand so you that se seventh step is the most holy place and you had those two archangels overshadowing that mercy seat. They're not looking at each other. They're looking into the cloud for the into the because Yahweh is, dwells between the wings of the cherubim. And you know, it's is correlated right with your own physical body, you know, with your kidneys washing the blood. And you you have an innocent sacrifice, or you you some has to die for you to live. You have to eat, you know, and and your kidneys washing the blood just as that brazen labor, and you have the adrenal adrenaline glands, which it produces a, a fight or flight a type of strength. Just like you hear with stories of people lifting up vehicles and cars and stuff, you understand. Know, so, and then, and, and then, in your chest cavity, you got your seven branch aorta, and your your heart, and you got a four chambered heart, and it pumps twelve pints of blood, and you know, it said that the blood is the life of the body and you have your lungs that produce fresh oxygen to your brain and and, and to your blood, fresh, fresh oxygen. And and that keeps keeps you vital, vital, vital and vibrant. And and your um cranial or your head cavity, you got you have your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere, and it also really testifies to uh, Michael and Gabriel because you, Michael was a warrior, and Gabriel was a messenger, and you don't go anywhere without thinking about it. You get the message first to go somewhere, and then you do it. So it's it's just so many of these witnesses as the previous vessels were speaking of just lying right on up and then you have a, a skeletal system and uh, the skeletal system it, it gives your body structure um, so the so the flesh profits nothing you know the the, the bones, remain a lot longer than the flesh does. That's why there's there are 
different. I, did I call for any scriptures? Because I don't want to start calling for different stuff. We're holding, I believe, Ephesians second chapter, and then Abraham, Genesis fifteen and twelve, and then John one. I think you called for Matthew five seventeen and Matthew twenty seven fifty one. Oh, that's a lot. Well, I apologize. I, you know, I just kind of was going as I was led, but I know I was just thinking of something else in my head where if somebody could find that scripture that says the flesh profits nothing, but it's the spirit that profits, you know, it's the words that he spoke. You understand those are their spirit and they are life. And life eternal, you know, so nobody can take that away from you. Um, but maybe we can have those uh, other things I call for. I think uh, Abraham promise this promise. It was through Abraham see Isaac, Isaac being a type of Yahshua the Messiah because he came by promise. Abraham was well beyond childbearing years, but he came by promise. And it's just, you know, uh, so, but all families of the earth will be blessed in his son, his son being Yahshua the Messiah, who is going to bless both Jew and Gentile and who already has. So there's no schism within the body. Uh, but can we have those scriptures? You say Genesis, with... fifteen and Genesis. Yes, ma'am. Thank. You. Okay, Genesis fifteen and twelve. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards they shall come out with great substance. Yes, and, and that's what came to pass. Uh, Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob. And um, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. And it was Jacob's posterity that went into Egypt as a result of a, a famine. Yahweh caused a famine in the land. And uh, Joseph, their brother, was a forerunner down in Egypt and had been given authority down in Egypt. But um, it was a pharaoh that rose up that, that didn't know Joseph and Ramses of the 18th dynasty. Um, you know, he put heavy burdens and heavy labor and, and had the children of Israel in slavery and bondage and building to building his treasure cities. And um, Moses is born under a death decree because uh, Pharaoh, he feared that the children of Israel, they were multiplying so rapidly that they would join with other nations and, and overtake him. So Moses is born under a death decree and his mother hides him for three months. And when she realizes she could no longer hide them any longer. She makes an ark of bulrushes and places it in the flags by the River Nile. And uh, Pharaoh's, uh, I want to say Pharaoh's daughter or Pharaoh's sister used to come and bathe herself um, at the River Nile because they believed that it had a, a it was good for bearing children. The River Nile, they they worshipped uh, 
but that's neither here nor there. The principal, uh, Pharaoh's sister, heard Moses crying out, and she retrieved the child. And this typifies a, a death, a burial, and a resurrection because she retrieved him from the Ark of Bull Rushes. So Pharaoh, or so Moses is raised up in Pharaoh's home, and he becomes accustomed with the uh, customs of, uh, of the Egyptian arts. And so he knows, the, knows that they worship many deities and he becomes accustomed with them. But, but he also knows he's Hebrew. Uh, but I'm gonna stick to what, at the age of 40 years old, he sees a, a Egyptian smiting a Hebrew and he intercedes as a peacemaker because he, he's testifying of Yahshua the Messiah because Yahshua is the comforter. And so he intercedes and he kills the Egyptian and he buries him in the sand and he comes out the next day and he sees two Hebrews striving amongst themselves. And he tries to intercede and they say, who made you a judge over us? Do you intend to kill us as you did the Egyptian? So he knows this thing is known. So he flees out into the land of Midian. And, you know, that's a principle of, a death, a burial, and a resurrection. And he gets out into the land of Midian and becomes a shepherd and marries one of the daughters of Jethro Ruel. And is out here tending the sheep where uh, Yahweh introduces himself to Moses. Maybe we could have Exodus, the third chapter, maybe. 3 and 13, and you could, well, you can start where you all are comfortable. Really, maybe a little bit of the first, first couple verses, and then you can drop down where he introduces. Now it's a pretty long. Okay. This is Exodus 3 and started a little bit earlier. So we'll start at Exodus 3 and 11. And Moses said unto Elohim, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with thee and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou goest to bring forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve Elohim upon the, this mountain. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers have sent me unto you. And, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, I will be uh, uh, Eya Asher Eya. And he said unto them, I'm sorry, let me start that over. And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asha Aya, and he said, Thus saith, and thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be have sent me unto you. Fifteen first. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim, the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac. And the Elohim of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. And thank you for that. You know, so he gives Moses the name and sends him back down into Egypt. Now, the, now the children of Israel, he 
tells the children of Israel that they couldn't just like overcome Pharaoh any type of way. It was a prescribed way for them to come out of Egypt. And Egypt is a type of, of the world with many gods and deities. And it represents misery, darkness, and confusion. But in order for them to leave, he instructs them to take out a lamb. So maybe we could have Exodus, the 12th chapter, because this lamb that they're going to take out is going to testify to Yahshua. So can we have, there's 10 devastating plagues. You know, Yahweh is judging the land just as he, he uh, was telling Abraham. And he judged that land, poured out 10 devastating plagues. And that's another thing. You know, you don't want to provoke Yahweh. And there's, there's a scripture on that too. But, uh, you know, they come out, he tell them to take out a lamb and they strike the upper door posts, the two side posts and a dip from a lower basin. They had to kill that lamb in the evening time and pierce it in the side and put the blood on the four points of the door. Uh, and they had to eat it in haste. They had to have their shoes on, on their feet and their staff in their hands, and they had to be ready to go. They came out of Egypt by principles. They followed a phenomenal cloud. There was an angel in the cloud that they followed, and they came through that Red Sea following that cloud. And it, the principle was blood, water, and spirit. And that's how they came out. Now, they spent some 40 years in the wilderness due to their lack of faith. Um, but they also, Moses is called up uh, and the 70 elders, and he's shown the days of the creation. He's shown Elohim transform into a fully furnished tabernacle pattern back into himself and then into the days of creation. And it's all coming in the first day, second day, third day, all, all pattern after that tabernacle pattern. And the remaining 33 days, he showed them the inner workings of that tabernacle pattern. So the men who built it would know how to build it because, you know, he's intelligence, wisdom, knowledge beauty, love, justice, foundation, power, and strength. They didn't, they came out with great substance. You know, Pharaoh was so scared, he started giving them gold. So many plagues was being poured out, giving them gold, get out of here, go on. And they end up, they built that tabernacle with the gold they had got from Pharaoh. But, <laughs> you know, but the thing about it is, you know, Galway has a purpose. And, you know, they constructed that tabernacle pattern as a, a dwelling place. Maybe we can have a Exodus 25, 8 and 9. I know, I know I don't have much time left, but he's always going to be dwelling with us. You know, he, he, he resides. If you reset, accept Yahshua, you know, he is spirit and he resides in us. You understand? And this tabernacle pattern was set up for a dwelling place. Exodus 25, 8, 9, and 40, and then Leviticus 16 and 2. And it looked like that completes my time. If anybody got anything out of what I said, all honor and praise goes to. Yahweh Elohim through his son Yahshua the Messiah. I'm a year the floor. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones. I'd like to thank all the speakers that came forth today, plus all the readers that came forth and helped with the uh, scripture readers, Dr. Uh, Kenyatta Jackson, Dr. Rose Taylor, and Dr. DeAndre Stansel. Thank you so much for your help with the reading tonight. We do meet publicly at the Hillside Best Western, 4400 
Frontage Road on most Sundays, unless otherwise indicated from 12 to 2. If we're not in person, we are on Zoom. Mondays and Thursday nights, we are on Zoom. Um, two Thursdays a month, we do meet in person. Our next in-person Thursday date will be this coming Thursday, which is the 20, I, I don't know the date, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's this Thursday. That's our next in-person uh, Thursday date. The 27th, okay. The uh, in-person Thursday nights are announced on a month-to-month -month basis. And our August uh, dates where we will be meeting on Thursdays are August 17th and August 31st, I do believe. Um, for, uh, can we uh, all bar hearts and minds? for doxology, which is taken from the last two verses in the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, Hope before all times, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.